Hello, this is Angela with Park Coast Permaculture. I had intended this morning to do a bunch of yard work because Chip Drop recently dropped a very large load of wood chips on my driveway, but the air quality has not been great because um, Oregon is on fire. So uh, I'm trying to take it a little bit easy today and protect my lungs and not do heavy work outside. So I thought this was an opportune time to discuss something that um, folks have asked me about a number of times over the years and then also something that I see posted in veggie garden groups uh, quite quite a lot in the summer and in the early fall actually and that is a question about brassicas so first off like what are brassicas I'm not referring to everything in the cabbage family here I'm mostly going to be talking about kales cabbage broccoli cauliflower broccoli rob brussels sprouts that kind of thing collards Yes, also turnips and rutabagas and things are, are in that group as well, but they're not as dramatically impacted by this. So let me show you an example. I'm sitting out here under my pergola, I'm trying to stay out of the wind. It's quite windy, as you can see, which is part of the reason we are having um, significant fire issues. It's very windy. My figs here and here are not happy. Their leaves are getting kind of desiccated because it's so dry and windy. The humidity is really low. Um, so I'm hiding out under here, out of the wind. So let's move over here. So here I have my collard starts, which is, this is some of them. If you watched my video on um, collards, how to start tree collards, I'll put the link up here. They were doing great. They were all taking great. I had them out here in a shady area. And then over the course of about two days, they all looked like this guy here. So the question I see in gardening groups tends to be a picture of kale or cabbage or colored or broccoli leaves. And what you see is the spine of the leaf and the leaf is completely denuded, just like this. And the question is, what is happening there? And the usual suspects tend to be squirrels or mice. And that's not actually what is damaging your brassicas. If you go out in the garden, you see that very characteristic pattern of the leaf is stripped down either side. What is causing that is the cabbage loper butterfly, um, which is in the genus Pieris. And is a white butterfly or sometimes a slightly yellowish tinge butterfly flitting all over the garden in the spring and summer. And I can actually see about mm, four of them right now from where I'm sitting. Let's see if you guys can see, can you see them out here? Those are Pieris. They're called cabbage butterflies, cabbage lopers. And they lay these little tiny, tiny, tiny eggs that you can't see. Uh, very well and they are going to hatch into little tiny green caterpillars the same color as the stems and leaves of your brassica so very well camouflaged and they are voracious so these lovely little bu butterflies which thank goodness my ducks can catch them out of midair and make a snack of them proliferate in the spring and summer and they will strip your brassicas and so the question folks have is uh, like the, your brassica will go from lovely looking to dead and completely stripped in about three days. Now, don't worry, this over here is going to recover. So here's an example of one of the other pots I had. I took it in the house and carefully over the course of three or four days picked off 15 babies off of this and it is recovering nicely putting out new leaves and these are going to do that as well. I'm sorry they are, the National Guard is flying today so that's a little bit loud. Um, these still have a good strong root system and they're starting to put out little tiny new leaves at the base. I don't know if you can see that. So they're gonna recover. If you discover that your brassicas have been damaged in this way, what can you do about it? Well, I'm lucky in that starts, I take into the house and then I protect them. They stay in a sunny window cell. And normally I'm much more on top of it. I'm frankly embarrassed that I let this happen, but life got really busy. My plants were big and strong and had huge leaves on them and I thought everything was great. And I 
didn't pay attention to them for a few days, which is my fault, but they're recovering. So, um, okay. So, so what can you do about it? Well, this is, this is my tip. Don't grow brassicas. <laughs> Folks don't like that tip, but, um, in the summer I grow just a very few kinds of brassicas. This is one of them. This is, oh my, it wants to be a little bit backlit hit here. This is a dwarf curly scotch kale. You can see here. Sometimes called blue curl scotch, curled scotch, sometimes just called dwarf curly scotch. This is the best, in my opinion, kale for so many things, but also because it is pretty darn resistant to cabbage lopers. I hardly ever see any cabbage loper damage on it. So that's a great one to grow in the summer. I also grow red Russian kale, which gets some cabbage loper damage. I find they don't like kale as much as broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and cabbage. So very early on when I only had two children instead of four, I used to be very diligent about floating row covers for my brassicas in the spring and summer. And I would cover them and protect them. And that way the cabbage lovers couldn't get in to lay their eggs, right? So this is covered in this white mesh fabric. And you have to be really diligent about making sure the wind doesn't rip it up and you have to roll it up every fall. I found it a giant pain, actually. You have to loosen it and readjust it. Oh, here comes that wind we're, we're having right now. As the plant grows, you have to readjust it. And I found, especially for cauliflower, it can get so large, it's difficult to get the floating row cover to cover it without doing two strips. And then you end up with a gap and it's a pain. So I just don't grow brassicas in the summer other than those couple kinds of kale. So my solution is that because we have a mild winter, I am going to grow my brassicas over the winter because cabbage lopers are not active in the late fall, all winter and early spring. So they cannot possibly damage your brassicas. So that's my solution. I'm really into seasonal eating. And for me, I just think about the fall and winter as, um, and then into early spring. I get real excited in March because I've got broccoli and I've got broccoli rob and I've got Brussels sprouts. Those are those crops that I can plant them out in the garden in September and I can enjoy them in February, March, April. They are strong and sturdy enough to overwinter. If it's going to get below 15, I do cover them with a sheet or something easy or a bucket even sometimes. But in general, I find they overwinter very nicely and I will get a yield throughout the late winter and into the early spring while the cabbage lopers are still dormant and I don't have to cover them. I don't have to bother with any of that. And I save myself all of the frustration of coming out and seeing completely denuded, damaged, killed, beautiful brassicas right when I'm wanting to harvest them. So let's look at some of the varieties that I really enjoy growing. So a couple of tips if you are going to grow over the winter in a mild climate. Now keep in mind, if you live in a harsher climate, not zone 8B like me, if you live in a harsher climate, you can grow these things in a glass house or a greenhouse or even in the house house if you get enough direct sunlight or grow lights over the winter. Um, definitely in a cold frame. I used to use cold frames for years when we lived in colder areas. All of these things do very well. They like cool weather, they're cool weather crops. Okay, so. I'm a big fan of Fedco seeds. Really like them as a company, I really support them. They are on the East Coast, but the carbon footprint and cost of mailing seeds is very minimal because they they don't weigh anything. Um, I've been pondering whether I wanna make a video about which seed companies I do and do not support and why, but that may be a little bit political. So not that gardening isn't political. I mean, permaculture is revolution disguised as gardening. So um, I got to think about it. Might do that in time for seed catalogs to come out in January. But I really like Fedco. So when you're looking for brassicas to grow over the winter and into the spring, you want to look for ones with a short season. Broccoli rob matures much quicker than a full head of broccoli and you can cut and come again on it. So really versatile, produces for me 
really early so I'm planting it out now keeping it watered well while it germinates because you don't want to let the ground dry out you can also start it in the house um, and then plant it out here in a month when the rains come back I found that it produces consistently and I really like broccoli robin stir fries and um, things like that and you just having that short season gets you to maturity quicker and enjoying it quicker I really love savoy cabbage it does say 85 days. This is something I'm going to be enjoying. Now, keep in mind, back up, 85 days when the weather is optimum. So if you're growing it over the winter, these things may take longer because the growth rate will be slowed significantly in very cold weather, if not stilted and, and stopped. So for me, this is what I'm going to be enjoying in March. Also a cut and come again. So if you cut your cabbage, your savoy cabbage, it will, um, not all the way to the ground, but at the base of the head of cabbage, it will send off little shoots on the side and grow little more diminutive cabbage heads. So don't have to pull up the whole plant. I ordered a couple different new kinds of kale just to try, I'm always trying new kinds of kale. Maybe I will come up with something I love better than my dwarf curly scotch, but we'll see. I really like lachinato kale. I really like the also called dinosaur kale. I really like Russian red. Dwarf curly scotch cannot beat it for cold tolerance and cabbage loper tolerance. And I love that roughly texture. Probably also why I like Savoy cabbage so much. Definitely gonna throw in my rutabagas. These will be something I will be enjoying in the spring. Why grow turnips when you can grow rutabagas is my opinion. I am not a huge fan of turnips. I will eat them sliced and fried in bacon grease or duck fat, but I do not enjoy them on their own. Rutabagas on the other hand are buttery and have a beautiful golden color and I like them mashed with potatoes or roasted with carrots or used anywhere you would use potato for a bread or roll recipe use rutabagas and you'll get a beautiful golden bread also Brussels sprouts this is another one I'm planted out now and then I have them in the very late winter and early spring love Brussels sprouts so I hope that that helps y'all get a little glimpse of how I deal with cabbage lopers. First of all, what they are and how they damage your plants and how to avoid them. So in permaculture, we're looking for solutions. Insecticide is never a solution. And for me, I would rather think creatively about how I use the margins of the seasons how I work around and outside of the life cycle of the pests in my garden in order to get a yield. If you have any questions, I'm gonna make sure I drop the information for Fedco in the comments. Um, also some information on Pieris butterflies. And I'll be back soon. I have a whole lot lined up for the fall. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with your friends so that they can learn more about permaculture. Thanks.